what are we going to do today? We're going to be talking about the color wheel. Hey, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. Hello and welcome. My name is Clive from brandart.co.uk and thank you very much for pressing that play button. And today we're going to do a tip. And before I start, I want to say a big thank you to Tina. She's the one that does all my embroidery along with her husband out there in the USA. And I've actually got a hat band now, so I'm really excited. Now, a lot of you might say, that's a bit over the top, Clive. There's Clive's Five Art advertising everywhere on your channel. But I do occasionally take my hat off, so it does help. But I thought it might be a bit fun if I actually took that off and left my hat band on. But that might be going a bit too far, eh, hey, Tina? <laughs> so, I think we will skip the headband, because it don't, doesn't really suit me. But no, she done some wonderful things. She's actually done. Um, she's done me proud. Actually, she's actually done some lovely hat, hat bands um, for my my hats. Yes. And um, when I first seen them, I, I, I couldn't work out what they were. But now I know. But there we go. Thank you very much, Tina. Now let's put that there. What are we going to do today? We're going to be talking about the color wheel very, very quickly. This is one of the questions I get. No, no end of times. I get hundreds and hundreds of emails about colour theory. Now the colour theory lessons are in the iCards but there. So click on the iCards, that'll drop down. That'll take you into a playlist when I explain all that. And um, if you can't find it there, then pop along to theclives5art.co.uk and go along to the, um, the, the playlist page. Because I've got a page on the website now. All my playlists are there. Or they will be as soon as I update them. Yes, I'm running a bit behind. But they will be there. If there's anything there you want to see and there's not there, let me know and I'll get on to it straight away. Let's have a look at this colour wheel. So as you can see, it's very, very simple. Yes, it's a wheel and it's got colours on it. That's why they call it a colour wheel. <laughs> Less of a joke in and more seriousness. Yes, okay. Now, how do we use this? Well, basically, it's got the primary colours, which are red, yellow, and blue. Now they can't be mixed at all. Let's have a look at this on the, the board, it's easier. So as you can see, primary colours are your red, yellow and your blue. Now they cannot be mixed by mixing any other colour. Um, so you need to standardise a red, a yellow and a blue because some, some yellows um, are warmer or cooler than others, some blues again and even some reds can change. So you need, you need to select um, a specific red, yellow and blue. If you're going to do colour mixing, you need to standardise those three colours. Again, please look in the iCards I there and that will take you into a little bit more detail. But just for the day, um, I just want to show you around the colour wheel. So we've got red, yellow and blue and they are little triangles there. See red, yellow and blue. So they are primaries. Now if you add red to, let's say, um, yellow, I will turn that around like that. There you go. You're going to get an orange because it shows you there. And again, if you add a, a yellow, say to a blue, we know that's going to make green, but we'll just take that around like that. And that shows you, you'll get a green. Now you can do that with any color, um, yellow with violet, yellow with red, violet, yellow with red, red, orange, etc., etc., etc. Now if you add white to a red, that's what that little box there, add in white, that's going to give you a value. So it's going to, it's going to lighten that colour up. It's going, to, it's going to brighten it as your value. But if you add black to that colour, it's going to give you a shade there. So it's going to shade down that colour. It's going to make it look darker. And that is all explained there. You've got your primary colours, your secondary colours, and tertiary colours. And you've got warm, which are advancing colours, and cool, which are receding colours. When we do in landscapes, we want to cool the background colours down. So we want colours in the background a lot cooler than the foreground. That makes it look as if it's receding into the distance. So the warmer the colours, the more advancing they are. The cooler the colours, the more receding or the further away they tend to go. It also explains to you how a colour is actually described, how it's breaking down into its hue, its value and its intensity, which is chromas or saturations. That means how dull or bright that particular colour is. It explains what a tint, a tone, a shade, and it even goes into a neutral grey. You've got a value stick there, which you could see on the side of my, my easel there. I've got a value scale there, which I use extensively. 
So again, just, this is just ease of use. To actually understand the color wheel, you really do need to, to click on the iCards and go into my color theory lessons. That'll take you into a lot more depth. But this is just a quick guide. If you're not too sure what a complement of blue is, then it's orange, because you can look directly there. It's just a visual reference, really. Um, green is a complement of red, or red is a complement of green, depending on which way you look at it. And again, to, to dechromerize or desaturate the color, in other words, to, to, to dull back its intensity, if you add a little bit of green to red, it's gonna change the red. If you add a little bit of red to green, it's gonna change that intensity and vice versa, blue, violet, yellow, orange, blue, orange, etc. They're all complements. Anything directly opposite will desaturate a color. It's as simple as that. Complements are something that's directly opposite each other or in a pyramid. Um, there we go. If you have a look at this, we've got split complementary colors. Let's put that back on red. You've got split complementary colors. So a blue, green, a yellow, green is going to be a split complement of a red and as you turn this around there you will see let's turn that around it's not as easy when it's when it's not stuck down let's let's turn that arrow that black arrow now to orange so that's your pure color okay so the split complementary of orange there if you follow that line is blue violet and blue green so it's a nice little guide and tetriad colors there again, which are three colors you could use in a color scheme. So in this particular instance, if your main color was like say an orange, if you, if you follow that, you've got a violet and you've got a green. So they will sit very well in, in, in a color scheme for you. Um, tetra again are, are four equal colors. So you've got red, a violet, a green and a yellow. Again, they will sit very lovely into a, a color for you, into a, a painting, sorry. Um, so, and that's all explained there on the side. The relationship with colors is how that is actually turned around. You've got a tint of red, which is add by adding white. You've got a shade of red there, which is showing by adding black. But if you mix a gray using black and white and add that to a red, you get a tone. There you go. And it explains then complementary, annuligous, and monochromatic. Monochromatic is a color scheme where you're just using one specific color. Let's just say a blue. Your paint is all going to be blue. It's just going to be different values of blue. So, so it's monochromatic. It's just a blue, all different types of blue, different values of blue then. You've got very light blues, very mid-tone blues, and you've got dark blues. And that's all this is, is a visual reference. But to understand this, Again, in more detail, it's very important that you actually go and watch a color theory um, lesson. And um, again, as I said, they are actually in the iCards there. Um, I'll put a link in the comment box below if you want to follow that link. Uh, but if you get stuck again and you still can't find them, please pop along to www.clouds5art.co.uk and there you will see my color theory lessons. And I I'll cover things like compliments and, and perspectives and vanishing points and things like that. That's all in those lessons as well. So thank you very much for watching. And again, Tina, thank you very much for my headband. And um, I hope I'll see you in the studio shortly. Please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And it's very important uh, to give me a thumbs up so I know you've enjoyed this lesson. If you give me a thumbs up, just let me know what's wrong and see if I can correct the issues for you. Because all I want to do at the end of the day is just help. And if I've done that, I've done my job. So thank you very much. Have a good day, good week, a good month you, and I will see you on the next one. Nice. Hello and welcome. Yes, this is just a quick little advert for my medium mix formula. What is medium mix? Well, it's a blend of different types of acrylic polymers and one thing or another and retarders. And I'm not gonna go into the recipe as such, but what this actually does is I mix this with a little bit of water, which I'll show you in just one minute. And I use that to thin down my acrylics to use in my wet and wet blending techniques and my acrylic techniques uh, in place of water. Why? Because if you over thin acrylics by more than 30 to 45 percent with water, the polymer strains will actually break down and your paint could flake off. I'm not saying it will, but there's a good chance it might. So what do we do with this? Well, this is available on the website. All you need to do is put about four or five squirts of that formula 
into a little container and you've seen me doing this during the videos and I add a roughly about 20 to 30 percent water to that and that's all the thinning liquid that I use to use during my painting processes and that actually keeps the polymer bonds in place because these little polymers, polymers like to hold hands yes if so if you over thin them with water they tend to lose grip and break away and flake off now so if you want to pop along to www.clive5art.co.uk and go to the shop then that product is available with many others that are there with videos so without further ado let's get back to the main feature nice hey welcome thanks for stopping by it's time to learn with our friend Clive so grab your brush, have a great time And don't forget to click subscribe Visit Clive5R.co.uk